Why Hillary Clinton this time around? Well, there's probably no one who's ever run for the presidency that's more qualified than Hillary Clinton. She is the most experienced and the best qualified. She's by far the best qualified person in America. And by the way, thoroughly vetted. She doesn't have to answer any questions right now. She has scrubbed the server and their emails will never see. She was supposed to have her emails separate to begin with. And then she wiped the server clean. How can you get answers from the ones that were scrubbed? If there's nothing to hide, why do they always act? I don't think they are. Conflict of interest concerns have surfaced around presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. Her non profit organization got millions of dollars from foreign donors while she was Secretary of State. The biggest individual donations came from Ukraine. Wouldn't it be at least be fair to look into it and ask these questions about whether or not the giving of foreign money to a foundation that belonged to that family in any way influenced the action that person took as Secretary of State? The Clintons have made $150 million over the past decade. Sidney Blumenthal appeared to be running State Department business. Mr. Blumenthal's involvement was more wide-ranging and more complicated than previously known. Helping Hillary Clinton in a capacity that nobody knew about. He's basically the personification of a Clinton insider. And in all kinds of ways that bring up some, some very big concerns. Advising Secretary Clinton on Libya while he had business interests there. Bottom line here, Blumenthal sent intelligence to an alternate personal email account while being paid by the Clinton Foundation. Uh, several Gulf states have been uh, donating money to the Bill, Hillary and Chelsea Foundation. Tens and tens of millions of dollars from countries with atrocious human rights records. Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Kuwait, and Brunei. She's taken money from countries that abuse the rights of women. All those countries have been criticized by the State Department for violating women's rights. Are they expecting something in return? Name one country on this planet in which we have a better relationship with them now than we did in January 2009. She was the Secretary of State. Her handling of Benghazi. Sidney Blumenthal. She wiped the server clean and we will right. never see them. They decide they're not going to play by the same rules. She has to answer some very significant questions. So let the conversation begin. I have a feeling it's going to be very interesting. Just wanted to come back and say hello. Some of you have been on the trail for the whole time. No more debates. No more naps. <laughs> Will you accept the results of the election? <laughs> You know, it was horrifying what he said on the debate stage tonight. Um, you know, our country's been around for 240 years. Um, and, you know, we are a country based on laws. Um, and we've had hot, contested elections going back to the very beginning. Uh, but one of our hallmarks has always been that we accept the outcomes of our elections. We do the best we can to have and fair elections, which we do. Uh, and somebody wins and somebody loses. Uh, so what he said tonight is part of his whole effort to blame somebody else for his campaign and for where he stands in this election. As I said, uh, whenever he is losing, he says the system, whatever the system is, whether it's uh, you know, being in court about Trump University or losing the Iowa caucus in the Wisconsin primary or losing Emmys, for goodness sakes, he says that it's rigged against him. And, how, did uh, how did you feel? How did you feel when he said, you know, nasty woman, nasty woman, and uh, you're a puppet and the, the issue of Vladimir Putin? Yeah, I just don't. I, I just didn't pay any attention to that. I was very concerned that even now after 17 intelligence agencies in our government uh, both uh, military and civilian have confirmed that Russia has engaged in uh, cyber attacks against uh, Americans that he refused to admit that it's true and condemn it uh, for what it is which is a blatant uh, effort to try to interfere in our elections. From your praise for Goldman Sachs bankers to Vanessa uh, calling Bernie Sanders a doofus will make it harder for you if you win to rally the liberal base around your agenda and your appointment. Not at all. Bernie Sanders is out there working hard every day to get me elected. Uh, I'm looking forward to working with everybody in our party. But as I said in uh, the closing, which they gave us at the last minute, uh, I'm reaching out to all Americans, uh, Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. I want to summon every American to 
you know, use his or her talents and energy uh, and ambition to really help our country. And that's what I'm going to be. Are you worried about? Are you worried about, um, you worried about violence or? Are supposed to if they are found to have, you know, I know nothing parts. about this. I'm not, you know, I, I can't deal with every one of his conspiracy theories. But I hope you all have something to eat and something to drink on the way back to New York. Thank you. 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 I'm happy to be with you, Michael. Really. You know that I have to ask you about FBI Director Comey yeah. and this letter. He says that new emails appear pertinent to the investigation of Secretary Clinton's private servers. How concerned are you about the impact this is going to have on the election? Well, look, you know uh, that the FBI works for the administration. I'm not allowed to comment at all. I know nothing about it. I just found out today. I know that Hillary just had, I was told Hillary just had a press conference saying, release the emails. I think the quicker they release the emails for the public to see them, the better off. Um, and uh, I have confidence in Hillary. You're the former chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee. You're an attorney, Syracuse Law School, smart guy. The language of this perplexes me. He says, the FBI cannot yet assess whether or not this material may be significant, and I cannot predict how long it will take us to complete this additional work. Did he just put his thumb on the scale? Dianne Feinstein is saying he played right into Donald Trump's hands. Well, I, I'm not going to comment. Look, uh, that's the same language you used before. But then why uh, write the letter? Well, because I, I don't know why. I can't read his mind. But um, look, I found him to be a straight guy. He's been... Uh, He's a tough guy. He's a Republican, but he's always been straight, and uh, and I'm confident that uh, that uh, you know this will this will turn out fine. What worries me, Mr. Vice President, is that folks are going to go to the polls or have already gone to the polls, and they don't know what to make of this. They're in the dark. What well, should happen I, now? I think it's unfortunate. I think Hillary, if she said what I'm told she said, is correct. They should release the emails for the whole world to see. The whole world will see. They, they can continue their investigation. It won't, to the best of my knowledge, it won't prejudice the investigation. And, but that's, that's sort of the, the stilted language the agency always uses. And uh, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, and so it's, it's unfortunate. I'd be remiss if I didn't note that if she had released all the emails from the get-go, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Well, that's true, um, but I, I don't know where this email, where these emails came from. What apparently I, Anthony I Weiner. Well, oh God, oh. Anthony Weiner. Um, I should not comment on Anthony Weiner. I'm not a big fan, and I wasn't before he got in trouble, so I shouldn't comment. On it. FBI agent Peter Strzok allegedly failed to follow up on a report of a possible breach on Hillary Clinton's private uh, email server. God, this story goes on and on. Let's bring in Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, who has been pushing for a second special counsel to investigate the yep. Clinton probe. Congressman, uh, what I can tell is that uh, Mr. Strzok knew that there was some abnormality with the megadata on uh, Mrs. Clinton's email server. I, know I don't want to get too technical, yep. but in other words, there were grounds to take a look at this because we know how the secret uh, information that was being put through this server. Uh, but in the end, he never followed up. Yeah, right. And shouldn't, right, and that shouldn't surprise us. Mm. After all, this is the same guy who changed the now famous exoneration letter from the term gross negligence, which is a crime, right. to extreme carelessness. So we all thought the fix was in with the Clinton investigation at the top levels of the FBI. Now that we've seen the Strzok and Page text messages and get this story, we know the fix was in because this is the agent. This is the this, the super agent, Peter Strzok former head of, uh, deputy head of counterintelligence, who ran the entire Clinton investigation. He interviewed Mills, he interviewed Aberdeen, and he interviewed Secretary Clinton. And then it shouldn't surprise us that he didn't follow up on something that was pretty darn important. And you mentioned the editing because uh, Jim Comey at the time said it was reasonably likely that hostile yep. actors gained access to then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's private email account. That was watered down to say it was merely possible. That's a huge difference. Right. So he changed that, that, that part of the exoneration letter to merely possible. He also changed the overall view of this right. from a gross negligence, which is, again, tracking with the criminal standard, tracking with the statute itself, to extreme carelessness. What is also interesting is, of course, this is the same agent 
who launched the Trump Russia investigation. Right. He's the agent who said this George Papadopoulos issue, which has also had some new information come out in the last several days. He's the one who started the Russian investigation. So think about it. The guy who interviewed Mills, Abedin Clinton, ran the Clinton investigation, changed the exoneration letter, didn't follow up on this, this important breach of her, of her uh, uh, computer, of her server, is also the guy who launches the Trump Russia, uh, Trump Russia investigation. Yeah, it's, That's why we need a second special yeah, counsel. It's not exactly difficult to connect the dots, is it? Next one for you, Congressman. Um, President Trump calling out the Democrats for dragging their heels on DACA. Now, this morning he tweeted this. Total inaction on DACA by Dems. Where are you? Question mark. A deal can be made. Um, your response to that, Congressman? Yeah, you, we could do the right thing, and the mm -hmm. right thing is consistent with what the American people said on Election Day. Yeah. They were very clear about this because President Trump campaigned on this. Build the border security wall. Stop chain migration. Get rid of the visa lottery. Mm -hmm. Deal with asylum policy. Deal with this crazy sanctuary city policy we see all over the country. Deal with all those things. And then, oh, by the way, we can also deal with these DACA individuals in the appropriate fashion. So l let's have that kind of legislation passed. That's what we all campaigned on. That's consistent with the, the mandate of the election. And more importantly, that's exactly what is in Chairman Goodlatte, Bob Goodlatte, Chairman of the Judiciary. That's what's in his legislation that we in the Freedom Caucus and we in the House Republican Conference are trying to get passed. You know, it's interesting, Congressman, because yesterday we had protests outside the Democratic National Committee uh, headquarters, yeah. protesters, dreamers, upset with the lack of action and ability to negotiate by the Democrats. So, you know, those that would technically believe that the Democrats would be behind them, they're kind of turning on themselves a little bit. Right. I think there's an agreement that could be had that's consistent with what the American people want, consistent with what's best for this country. There's an agreement there. But I do think many Democrats are more concerned about politics and the political benefit they right. think this will give them this fall than they are with solving problems and doing what the American people elected us to do. Uh, fascinating stuff, as always. Congressman Jim Jordan, thanks so much, Congressman. You Appreciate bet. your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Ash Joining us tonight, Dr. Sebastian Gork, a former strategist to President Trump, now a Fox Business National Security Strategist, and uh, always it is great to see you, uh, Dr. Gorka. And let's, uh, let's turn to first the most recent revelations that the FBI informant, about whom they say uh, the, he, he was absolutely pivotal uh, to launching their investigation, uh, pure bull and nonsense, uh, but nonetheless we find out he had significant uh, connections to the Clintons. Are you shocked? Um.